before we get into the news, make sure to subscribe to my first and second channels and hit the notification bell to stay notified of future uploads. And follow my Instagram to get notified more frequently of MMA news before it is posted on my YouTube channel, and feel free to follow my Facebook and Twitter as well. To start off UFC President Dana White comments on who is the king of the jungle, Dana White states, Khabib is the man now, Connor isn't the man anymore, so Khabib gets to sit back and call the shots. Conor McGregor opons on Twitter stating, who's not the man? Your man had that marquee event did he? More like an event in a marquee. A tent in the fucking sand it was. Keep spoofing to yourself horse. Jockstrap sniffer championships. To start off Eddie Bravo gives his thoughts on Tony Ferguson vs. Khabib Nurmagomedov on MoHOSANI 360 YouTube channel Eddie Bravo states, with that caliber of fight, I don't make predictions. Bravo said. But we are planning on beating him. I can't give away too much, but the difference is everybody else is running from Khabib on the ground. He continued, explaining what sets Ferguson apart from Nurmagomedov's previous foes. They spent the whole time trying to get to the fence to get back up. Tony's not going to do that. Tony's going to attack. So it's going to be a little different. He's going to attack with submissions, and he's going to attack with elbows. He's not going to try to get back up. He'll try to keep the fight standing and do some takedown defense and all that stuff. When you're looking for Darces all the time, it alters your game, he said. Darces, you'll approach him a little bit differently, it alters your game. Tony is that guy. Tony will hit those things from every angle. While Khabib is trying to take him down, he's got to watch out for all that shit. Last, Dana White responds to Conor McGregor vs. Frankie Edgar rumors and speaks on when HES possibly gonna fight in a Boston Herald interview, Dana White states, I said it leading into the Mayweather fight, he may never fight again after this fight when you make this kind of money, he's fought once since then. Conor loves to fight and wants to fight again, but the Frankie Edgar fight isn't going to happen. Edgar is two weight classes below him. I think Connor will fight next year. I think the biggest thing is that I wasn't patient, you know. Um, we had 25 minutes to get it done, and and I was comfortable on the outside, and uh, I should have stayed there a little bit longer and um, waited for her to give me um, the takedown. And instead, I, I reached for it, and then we ended up in the the clinch up against the cage um, more often than I would have liked. And uh, that's that was the um, I think that was a determining factor in, in, in the fight for sure. I didn't notice that her foot was hurt, but I knew that I was checking her kicks with my knee and it wasn't going to be too pleasant for her. <laughs> she just said she knew it wasn't the outcome that I wanted, but it was. Um, she just said that it was a lot closer than, you know, what I probably feel like it is, you know, just in my heart. And that um, I'm still improving, and it's still a step forward. Uh, 
I don't think anybody um, steps into the octagon with the idea of losing. But just the fact that um, the crowd was still um, cheering and behind me, it, it, it does, it fills my heart. It, uh, it lets me know that I'm on the right track. <laughs> that's fight game, that's life. Okay, I want them all. We were just both really sweaty, and um, you know, <laughs> it's uh, it's hard to sink those in when you're really sweaty and you got the gloves on, and and we both want it, and uh, it was just it was a uh, it was a fight. No, this is, this was what I was focused on, you know, um, and this is what I needed. You know, I just, I feel like everything happens for a reason and I needed this fight in order to uh, understand uh, how to move forward. Absolutely. It is, you know, um, the feeling of victory is addicting, and the highs are super high, and I always say this, the lows are really low, and I think the hardest part is um, letting down all my coaches and, and uh, fans, um, because of all the time that they put into me, you know. Uh, man, I, I'm, I'm, I'm good. I'm super happy. Uh, tough fight, but dominant performance. And this is what I always say. You can have a plant in the first punch. And uh, I took the fight second by second. And uh, I'm happy. 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 I'm just happy. Just happy. I think, I think I broke it at the end of the second round or the third round. And uh, fifth round, I was like, okay, I shouldn't kick with this. I felt pain, but then I was like, just fuck it. <laughs> what worse can happen? Like, they're gonna break it in three pieces, they're gonna put it together. That's it, you know, and uh, that's a tough business, you know. And honestly, I don't like myself uh, from the octagon being injured uh, with the crotches, but it's my job. Big, big hobby, big, big passion, crazy passion, crazy job. But this is how we make money, baby, and uh, I love it. And I don't know, I will go to the hospital tomorrow morning and now I want to rest, spend some time with my family, uh, with the people who came to watch my fight. I'm very, uh, I want to say thank you to the fans. They fill out the arena and that's amazing, you know, and uh, so many uh, Polish flags, uh, t-shirts, uh, it was amazing, you know. We, I felt like home, uh, it was an honor to headline the show. Uh, let's do this one more time. Really? That's cool. Ben Askren told MMA Fighting recently HES open to fighting Jorge Masvidal again. Askren states, What I said explicitly was I wanted to come back from retirement to see if I was the best in the world. In that 5 seconds, we didn't find that out. We found out Jorge has a fantastic knee and that I'm not invincible, but we didn't find much else out. I think I can bounce back from that pretty quickly and hope that it happens. That would be really nice to have a rematch. Again, we'll see where the division goes and where I'll be, but I hope so. Honestly, I think it works from a marketing angle, he said. I don't love either one of the guys, but I think it definitely works from a marketing angle. They pitched it correctly, and I think it makes sense. Or hey Masvidal responds on Twitter saying it gets some wins and we can do it hashtag super necessary.
Then Askren responds and says, I see you're appreciating me make you famous. You're welcome sucker. Lastly, on episode 153 of the Below the Belt podcast with Brandon Schaub, Schaub assumes Velasquez is gonna use steroids in match against Brock Lesnar. Schaub states, I hate to do this with WWE fans. Every single one of your favorite wrestlers is on steroids. If you're gonna play ball, you gotta get dirty. And that's just part of the game. Why wouldn't you be? Who gives a f asterisk ck? Why wouldn't you be? There's no difference between what they're doing and what Hollywood's doing. If you get a call to be Batman, you better juice the f asterisk ck up and be Bruce Wayne. What are you doing? No one actually looks like Bruce Wayne. If you're doing WWE, juice the f asterisk ck up. Look like a superhero. You're on the road 300 days a year, especially with Kane and his injuries. Good for him. We'll see what's up because he's never been like jacked. If he gets F-seeking Nacho Libra and just F-seeking Shred City, that'd be so dope. But also him getting out of the USA DA testing pool. No SH asterisk T dude. If you wanna be a swimmer, you gotta get wet. If you wanna be a WWE wrestler, you gotta put needles in your ass. Thanks for watching. Make sure to leave a comment below of what you thought of the video and subscribe and hit that notification bell to get notified for more.